Hi everyone. Um, so starting 6.2, we're getting into uh, factoring. Factoring can be challenging at first. Um, so uh, I encourage you to, of course, stay patient and try to stay positive while you're learning to factor. Eventually factoring will be a tool that we use to solve equations with. Um, what it means to factor, basically factoring is unmultiplying. So if you think of a number like 20, 20 is um, fully expanded. It is not factored at all, but 20 would be the same as four times five. And what I mean by unmultiplying is now this is the factored form or a factored form of 20, right? So 20 is equivalent to four times five, but this is the unmultiplied version, right? Instead of actually multiplying four times five to get 20, I'm just writing 20 as four times five. You could also write four as two times two. So this would be another name for the number 20, right? So this is an even more factored version of the number 20. So that's why I'm saying factoring is like unmultiplying, right? We're multiplying these out to get back to 20 over here. So the factored version of this, which is here, is the unmultiplied out version. So I'll go through all these problems. And just like the other video, I encourage you to kind of pause and play the video um, after practicing some. So for uh, 16x to the 6th over 8x squared. The instruction says to divide the monomials. Basically, we want to simplify these things. So there must be a more simple way of saying 16x to the 6th over 8x squared. So if I think of factors of 16, I can have 8 as a factor. So 8 times 2 would be 16. And then factors of x to the sixth, I can write x squared times x to the fourth. I'm basically trying to involve the denominator up here. So notice I have eight times x squared still in the denominator. Once you have common factors top and bottom, you can go ahead and cross them off. All right, so I had eights top and bottom. These are factors I'm canceling. So those eights can go away, this x squared over x squared can go away. So all that is left is that two and this x to the fourth. So two x to the fourth would be the simplified version of this problem. All right, on to page 76. So we have 4x to the 4th and a 12x to the 4th. I'll just write that a little larger. I know this is kind of small font. So I want to cancel any like terms that I can figure out. So I have basically 1 times 4x to the 4th up top. And then in bottom, I have a 4x to the 4th times 3, essentially. All right, this makes my 12x to the 4th. So I have a common factor of 4x to the 4th, top and bottom. I can cross that off. And all that is left is 1 3rd. Part 3. So I have an 18. I can think of that as 2 times 9. I have an x to the 9th. I can think of that as x squared times x to the 7th. And then a y squared, I can think of that as y times y. And then this is all over 2 times x squared times y. And now I have some commonalities. The 2s are extra. The x squareds are extra. And a copy of these y's. So you can write this in its fully simplified form as 9x to the 7th y, I believe. So 9x to the 7th y, yep, it's the only thing left. So divide the polynomial by the monomial. So here I have a trinomial divided by this monomial. 
So you can think of this actually as negative 15x to the ninth plus 6x to the fifth minus 9x cubed over 3x squared. Now, when you're dividing a polynomial by a monomial, it's equivalent to split this up and say negative 15x to the ninth over a copy of 3x squared. And then I can write the other two fractions. So I have plus 6x to the fifth over 3x squared and then minus 9x cubed over 3x squared. So these two are equivalent. And now basically I have like three problems that look similar to this one, right? I have this one to simplify, this one to simplify, and this one to simplify. So going ahead and doing that, negative 5 times 3 would be the 15, times x squared times x to the 7th, all over 3x squared. The 6 and the 3, so I can say 3 times 2 times x squared times x cubed over 3x squared. And then here I can say minus 3 times 3 times x squared times x over 3x squared. And now I'll grab the red pen and come in here and cancel a bunch of stuff. So we have 3x squared right there and there. I have 3x squared right here and there, right? So 3x squared, I canceled with that 3 and that x squared. Then 3x squared is completely right there. So in simplified form, we have just a negative 5x to the 7th left. I then have a 2x cubed. Right, that was the only thing here and here that survived. And then I have a negative 3x. Okay. And you can speed this up if, if you're kind of catching on to this. So for this one, again, I have a trinomial over a monomial. So I can think of this as 25x to the ninth over 5x cubed minus 7x to the fourth over 5x cubed plus 10x cubed over 5x cubed. So I know that 5 goes into 25 five times, so I'll have a 5 here. And if I use that property where we have the same base top and bottom, I need to take 9 minus 3. So I have an x to the sixth that's left from here. 5 does not go into 7 evenly, so I'll just write negative 7 fifths down. And then an x cubed dividing into x to the fourth. Again, I'm taking 4 minus 3, so I just get an x there. And then 5 goes into 10 twice, and x cubed goes into x cubed once. So that would be it for that problem. So now we're getting into factoring. So example seven just says factor. So basically we want to undistribute or unmultiply everything that was distributed into this problem. So if you look across the two terms, we have a 5x to the fourth and a negative 45x squared. What we want to do is factor out all the commonalities from these two terms. So basically, we want to factor out the greatest common factor, the GCF, from these two terms. So 5 is divisible by 5. 45 is also divisible by 5. So I can factor out for sure a 5. And then if I look at the variables, I have x squared and x to the fourth. So I can factor out an x squared because an x squared is shared amongst those two terms. And then I need to figure out what's left behind. So I already factored out a 5x squared. I had a 5x to the fourth to begin with. So I'll have an x squared that is left behind, right? x squared times x squared will make my x to the fourth. I already have the 5 out, 
I had a, four, a 45, so I need a negative 9, and I already have the x squared out front, so I don't need any x's there. So that's factoring out the GCF. This one is not fully factored, and we'll see that later, but we did factor it, and that's all that this one wanted. So we factored out this piece. This does still factor, and we'll learn that later. So on to page 77. All right. So here's our first one where I'm going to teach you this process. Um, so there's a process that I'm going to apply to this one. So how to factor things like um, a x squared plus b x plus c. All right, so step one is multiply a times c. So on this one, a is this number here, it's the coefficient on the squared term. So a is actually one for this problem and c is negative 21. So a times c for this problem is one times negative 21. So that is negative 21. Step two, so I'll write it over here in general. So step two is now factor A times C, looking for factors that add to B. And by B, I mean this number here. So I want to find factors of negative 21, right? So this is me doing number two right here, step two. So that <clears throat> these factors not only, of course, multiply to negative 21, but I want them to add to b, which is negative 3 in this case. So try to think of factors that multiply to negative 21, but also those factors add up to negative 3. So negative 7 um, and... 3, if I do those, they do multiply to negative 21, but they don't add up to negative 3, actually, right? Um, so does this one even factor? So let's see, negative 21, another way to do that would be negative 3 and positive 7, but those do not add up to negative 3 also. That adds up to positive 4. Um, so I'm thinking what I'll do with this one, sorry about this um, class. I'll come back to this one, and I'll also come back to this routine once we actually need it. Basically, what this is telling me is that this process isn't going to work with this one, which means that this one just doesn't factor. Okay, so when they don't factor, so doesn't factor, because this process isn't working here, right? We're not figuring out a pair of numbers that both multiply to negative 21 and add to negative 3. So it doesn't factor for that reason, and just like when numbers don't factor further, we call those prime we call this one prime. So this is a prime polynomial. It doesn't factor, just like the number seven doesn't factor, it's prime. Right. We'll get into factoring trinomials in 6.3. So uh, we'll really dig into this process. Um, we were just getting started in it before I realized, oh, it doesn't factor. So sorry about that. Part three, um, it looks like if I factor out of this and then out of this, this is called factoring by grouping, <clears throat> then we'll perhaps get a good factorization to occur. So if I just focus on these two terms, 
factor out of there, I can factor in x squared, right? Because they sh both share x squared, leaving behind an x minus 4. Move over to these two terms. I have a negative 9 and a 36. I'll factor out a negative 9, leaving behind an x minus 4, actually, right? Because negative 9 times x is negative 9x. Negative 9 times negative 4 is positive 36. And now I have x minus 4 and x minus 4. So I now need to factor it out. So x minus 4 factored out front. And what is left behind is x squared minus 9. That's kind of a weird step sometimes. Um, but I'm treating x minus 4 as one object. Right, so imagine you had x squared times y minus 9 times y, just like I have here, right? x squared times a thing minus 9 times that same thing. So here's x squared times a thing minus 9 times that same thing. If I were here, then I could factor out a y. And I could say y factored out front, leaving behind x squared minus 9. And that's exactly what I did here. I'm just treating x minus 4 as y. All right, so part four, factoring out the greatest common factor, so the GCF, it looks like I have a 2 and a 54. So definitely a 2 can be factored out front. I have an r to the fifth and an r squared. So I'll factor out an r squared since they both share that r squared. What is left behind to make a 2r to the fifth is an r cubed. Right, so that way I have 2 times r squared times r cubed. 2 plus 3 gives me the 5. And now to create the 54 r squared, I already have 2 r squared, so I need a plus 27 here. Now again, this is not fully factored. This one also is not fully factored, but we just wanted to kind of just get a handle on what factoring is, not fully factoring yet. All right, I'll uh, do another video later on for 6.3 and 6.4. All right, bye.